Good evening, the news for this Monday, 3rd of May. The healthcare agency is, uh, as uh, of today, implementing the following measures at the Seychelles Hospital and other health centres. Patients who test positive for COVID-19 and have mild to moderate symptoms will be admitted to the Ons Royale Hospital, and the hospital will continue to provide health services. All specialist clinics offered by the regional health centres will temporarily cease operations. The Seychelles Hospital will temporarily discontinue selective operations, only emergency operations and surgery for cancer patients will continue. The United States has become the latest country to advise travellers not to visit Seychelles. It follows growing concern about the spread of new COVID variants, including those uh, sweeping across India. The Center for Disease Control is urging people who must travel to get vaccinated and maintain physical distancing. It ranked Seychelles in the very high category for COVID, denoting the maximum level of danger. Meanwhile, a respected travel analyst has predicted that Seychelles will remain on the UK's banned red list. The PC agency bases its claim on infection rates, the number of deaths and the reliability of local data. The UK's so-called traffic light system notes a steep rise in infections despite our small population. The latest figures from the Ministry of Health say there are 744 active COVID cases with 28 deaths to date. SBC News understand the government's Platinum Committee met today to discuss the latest COVID developments. The committee comprises leading public health officials who advise the president on how to manage the crisis. There is a new private clinic at Eden Island that offers PCR testing for COVID-19. It was the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Tourism, Sylvester Radogond, who officially opened the clinic this afternoon in the presence of various guests. For, for 2,700 rupees, people can receive their PCR tests in 24 hours, but there are also fast-track services available. The owner of the business, Justin Edson, says that it was not an easy venture, but he feels that the clinic, an investment of $2.5 million, has the best facilities to offer credible tests and rapid results. We have spent many weeks and months setting this up. I must say this was the most difficult business setup I have ever experienced anywhere in the world. It has been incredibly regulated. Um, it is incredibly challenging. We overcame the challenges by making sure that we could provide the very best laboratory that Seychelles could possibly wish to have. Our laboratory would be accredited in the United States, in the United Kingdom, anywhere in Europe and any other country. Our laboratory is located in La Misere. It's a dedicated facility of over 800 square meters. The laboratory itself has been specifically designed to comply with World Health Organization directives and federal FDA records as well. The, um, the laboratory is, um, has all the necessary equipment, including negative pressure in area, every area and every room. The laboratory is the only laboratory in Seychelles that has negative pressure in every single room. No other private laboratory even has negative pressure. The police have said they are satisfied with the public's conduct during this International Labor Day weekend. Police spokesman Jean Toussaint said although the police intervened in certain situations where there were large gatherings in public and private places in contravention to health guidelines, these were few. Mr Toussaint said there were instances when they had to issue fines to car owners who were playing loud music in car parks and other public spaces. He said that in general, the public cooperated with the police. The authorities also had to close down a bar in town because of overcrowding. Officials from seven entities have appeared in front of the new uh, Finance and Public Accounts uh, Committee of the National Assembly today. This is the first of several sessions that will take place this week. The FPSC is seeking clarifications on issues highlighted by the Auditor General in his report published last year. 
entities that were present today are the Seychelles Heritage Foundation, the Police Department, the Energy Commission, the Tourism Board, the National Youth Council and National Sports Council. The Seychelles Conservation and Climate Adaptation Trust, SECAT, has launched its fifth round of financing of the Blue Grant Fund to support projects in the blue economy sector. With over 23 million rupees now available to fund projects, the CEO of SECAT, Angelique Popono, says that they are looking for creative projects this year. This year, the Blue Grants Fund is launching its fifth call for proposals. Um, our priorities remain more or less the same, but the real focus this year is now that Seychelles has protected 30% of its exclusive economic zone, we want to make sure that we move that away just of drawing the lines on the map and having it in law, but really to go towards implementation. So we want to make sure that uh, ocean stakeholders can be part of that implementation, whether you're part of the community, NGOs, government. As usual, our priority sector also includes fisheries, um, and we also want to assist uh, entrepreneurs to advance the blue economy with new, sustainable, innovative business models. It will now be easier for banks and the financial institutions to access details of movable assets which loan applicants pledge as collaterals in order to secure a loan. This will be possible with the Seychelles' first collateral database registry, which went live this morning. It has taken over six years to realize the project, which is a partnership between the Central Bank of Seychelles, the World Bank, the Office of the Registrar General, and the Department of Information Communication Technology, the ICT. During a press conference at the Central Bank, the first deputy governor of the Central Bank, Mr. Christophe Edmond, said that the new system will facilitate loan processing as well as improve Seychelles' ratings in regards to the ease of doing business. In 2013, the Central Bank and Ministry of Finance basically initiated a project to develop the financial system. And we got the support from the World Bank. And one of the components of the financial sector development plan was how we can improve access to credit. And one of the component of, component of access to credit is what can be done to put in place a modern collateral database um, uh, system. Basically, to register movable assets and to make it a bit more efficient um, uh, online, where searches, whether even the secured party can uh, register the security on the, on, on the movable assets online. So in this case, for us to improve the access to credit, you need to have in place this centralized system whereby all movable properties can come in the system and the banks or the other secured parties or even an individual can search the system uh, online and check whether um, the asset that I would like to, to pledge whether it has already been registered or not. So Central Bank, um, we work with the Registrar General to look at the current processes in terms of the manual processes that they are doing. We work with the ICT also together, Central Bank and uh, Registrar General, to develop the uh, uh, collateral database registry system, which is an online system. In consultation with the World Bank, um, uh, there was a, we worked on the secure transaction bill, and the bill basically was approved by the, by the National Assembly in 2015 and then subsequently assented by the President also in 2015. And following that, this is where we started the work in developing the collateral database registry system. However, in terms of uh, granting a loan to our customers, there are the other processes that the banks need to follow in terms of your credit worthiness, but the, the banks can check the system, can register the security on, 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 on an asset quickly instead of waiting for a bit longer because as the process has to grow, maybe sometimes through a lawyer, also um, uh, physical and manual check by the Registrar General's office. And Terence Max is the new director of the Tourism Academy, the STA. Mr. Max was previously at the Academy for 12 years in different roles before moving into the hotel industry. The announcement was made this morning by the Minister responsible for Tourism, Sylvester Radogon. Mr. Max says he believes the Academy should focus more on its core mandate, that of producing high-quality graduates. In my opinion, STA has as its prime mission to enroll, to form and develop quality local talents for the tourism and hospitality industry. How successful this mission has been, for me, it's premature 
I'm sure we have some statistics and it will be very good to have them so that we can make the right decision as we embark on this transition and new journey with a proactive and forward-thinking approach. This was uh, the news uh, summary. Thank you for watching.